Hello and welcome to this tutorial. We're going to talk about the zero and the broadcast subnets. So we're going to start by asking ourselves a simple question. Can we use every subnet that we create? So in other words, if we have a classful network and we chop it up into smaller subnets, are all of the smaller subnets available to us to use? Well, the answer is yes and no. And so that's what we're going to focus on here today. Why, why can we answer that question uh, two different ways? Um, so let's start off by looking at what these two subnets are. The first one, zero subnet, is quite simply the first subnet that's created when you break up a classful network. So if you have, let's say, a class B and you subnet it and you uh, take a look at all the different subnets you created, the very first one is called the zero subnet. Now the broadcast subnet is at the other end. In other words, it's the last subnet created when you break up a classful network. So we have these two subnets, one's at the beginning, one's at the end, and initially they created some ambiguity with the, uh, the, the network that was subnetted and the actual subnets that were created. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the problems that were introduced by the zero and the broadcast subnet, and then we'll take a look at what's been done to address that. Let's take this class C network, 192.168.1.0, and let's apply a subnet mask. So let's, let's subnet this classful network, and we'll apply this subnet mask here, .224, which is a slash 27. And if we do that, these are all of the subnets we can create from this one classful network. So our two definitions, the, the zero subnet is the first one, and the broadcast subnet is the last one. So here is our zero subnet, and here is our broadcast subnet. So first, let's start with the zero subnet. Well, what kind of problem was introduced with this subnet? Well, quite simply, the zero subnet has the same subnet number as the classful network we just subnetted, or just broke into smaller subnets. So 192.168.1.0, that's our subnet, and now don't, don't forget, it's a slash 27 now. But this network number is the same as the network number of the class C network. And remember, the class C network, that's a slash 24, right? 255.255.255.0. So there's some ambiguity there. Which one are you, are you referring to? Are you, are you referring to the slash 27 or to the slash 24? It's not clear unless you have the subnet mask there to tell you. So that's the first problem that was introduced with uh, subnet 0. And then if we look at the broadcast subnet, that's the last one. And now here, again, we have a, this is a slash 27, right? So if we were to look at the range of available IPs, we would know that the broadcast address for this subnet, 192.168.1.255. Okay, so that is the broadcast IP for this slash 27, dot 224 slash 27. Well, what kind of problem does this present? Well, it again relates to the classful network that we just broke up. If we were to look at the broadcast address for this class C network, well, guess what it's going to look like? 192.168.1.255. It's the same as our subnet here. So they share the same broadcast IP. So the confusion there is, well, how do we know if we're talking about a broadcast address to the entire Class C network, or are we talking about a broadcast uh, that is meant just for this one subnet? Okay, so because of this ambiguity, this confusion, initially when you subnetted, these two subnets were not available to be used. Well, that's kind of a bummer because we're 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 wasting IPs. Those are they're perfectly valid. So what what the the solution that was created here is to enable the router to to be smart enough to know if you're subnetting uh, to tell the difference between uh, the subnets themselves and the classful network that they came from. 
There's a command in Cisco, and it's called IP subnet zero. This command is a global configuration command, and it enables the router to distinguish between the subnets and the classful network when we're talking about subnet zero and the broadcast subnet. Now, these days, the IP subnet zero command is enabled by default. Um, you can disable it if you want, and you would do that by issuing the no IP subnet zero command. But generally speaking, you want to stick with the default because you want to be able to uh, utilize these different subnets. Okay, so um, when you're talking about subnetting, and if you get any subnetting questions, the safe assumption is that we are um, using the IP subnet zero command. In other words, we can use these two subnets. Um, uh, but, you know, it should be in the back of your head that um, if for some reason this is disabled, um, then you want to rethink about uh, which of the subnets are available for you to use. Uh, likewise, if you're dealing with routing protocols that do, that do not support um, IP classless networks, then you want to go ahead and take that into consideration, too. Okay, so that's it. That is the zero subnet and the broadcast subnet. Thanks for watching.